Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed by the title in the intro, we are going over this optic that you see right here. This is the Trigicon SRO. Uh, many of you, of course, are used to the very popular and very well respected RMR. They released this one, I believe in 2019. I got one of the first ones in, so I have a ton of rounds through. I think I only filmed it though on this particular gun, but trust me, we've got thousands of rounds on it with no issues to date. We'll talk about that here in just a second, but they come in a couple different varieties, both uh, one MOA, uh, 2.5 MOA, and then five MOA in terms of dot size. This particular one is in the middle. It's the 2.5 MOA dot, meaning that your dot is gonna cover roughly 2.5 inches at 100 yards in terms of size. I really think all of those dot sizes are good. It really is a preference thing in my opinion. Generally speaking, I don't like to go above seven or eight in terms of pistol dots because things start to bloom and things like that, but any of those would work. This was originally designed as more of a competition or just hobby shooting uh, red dot, meaning that it wasn't intended for duty like the RMR was. Now that said, this was designed specifically for pistols, and uh, many may know the RMR was not. The RMR was a adapted to pistols and then Trigicon sort of had to rethink how they designed it. That's why they came out with the Type 2 because some of the Type 1s were having issues on a reciprocating slide. So the whole time this was designed, that was in mind. So that certainly is a good thing. Perhaps one of the reasons I've had no issues with function to date. So it does take the same footprint. So any of your standard RMR slides, mounts, etc., cetera, um, will fit this just the same. No issues there at all. Before we get into the details of the optic, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Sportsman's Guide. So for folks that don't know, Sportsman's Guide sells a ton of things that probably most of you are into, guns, ammo, accessories like optics, uh, a lot of cool surplus stuff as well, which I kind of dig, and various other things, survival items, all of those types of items, and code guns and gear will get you $20 off orders of $100 or more that excludes ammo, but everything else, it will get you that discount. And uh, I wanna thank them again for sponsoring today's video, making this type of content possible. Now back to the optic. On the left side, as well as the right side of the optic, we do have our adjustment buttons for intensity. There are eight different settings uh, for brightness. Two of them are night vision compatible for folks who are into that. Uh, one thing you'll also notice is that there are no squared edges here on this, unlike the RMR that kind of has a squared off front which should be right here. So one advantage of that is that it's more snag free for folks who want to conceal carry it. And uh, you'll notice here as well that our battery compartment is also located on the top, which is nice so you don't have to uh, take your optic off and then remount it um, if you're trying to change the battery out. Speaking of battery, they do rate the battery for three years on setting four. I've had this one in again for almost a year and a half at this point, I suppose, and have not changed the battery at all, left it on the whole time, and it is still nice and bright, no issues in that regard. Um, in terms of intensity, one big difference between this and the RMR that I think is an advantage for the SRO is that the RMR Type 2 has auto adjustment so you can change it and override it however after a few hours I do believe eight off the top of my head it will go back to auto adjusting so what it's doing is it's reading the environment and adjusting the intensity to uh, match you know your lighting conditions however if you're indoors and somebody flips on a light or turns off a light um, that intensity is going to change real quick that you're going to need to be able to get a good sight picture for the target so uh, in that instance you'd want to have it locked to a certain setting this allows you to do it. It has both. So you can use the auto adjustment or you can program it to set and override it, um, which again is huge in my opinion. I talked about that in the uh, Trigicon HRS video, I, how that was sort of one of the things I didn't like about it. The SRO improves it for sure. Typically at some point when I'm testing a pistol red dot, I will take the gun with a fully loaded mag, which this is, and an empty chamber, which we have here, and drop it from shoulder height onto concrete or a steel target, just depending on where I am. And I will tell you flat out, the SRO will fail that test. It's gonna fail it every time. Uh, and the reason for that, for folks who don't know, is because of the shape of the actual viewing window, right? So the RMR has that kind of curved in uh, shape on top. Now what that does is it gives it tons of integrity uh, for drop tests, particularly with the aluminum housing. The SRO is a 7075 aluminum housing, which is great. Um, but with a rounded one, you just don't have the rigidity and the ability to withstand shock. Now, the benefit, of course, of this one of the SRO is that the window is much larger. And a lot of folks do like that for picking up the dot or for tracking moving targets, hunting, etc. those sorts of things. Pros and cons to each. But again, I'll tell you the SRO will fail that. 
Again, it's not designed for a duty optic like the RMR is, but what I'm gonna do here is do a couple drop tests um, from waist height, um, so not shoulder height. We're gonna do it on grass and try wood as well if it, if it makes it through the grass and then kind of see how that works and then come back and discuss the results. So the optic is working perfectly fine. There's absolutely no issues from those two drops and uh, that certainly is a good thing. I was a little bit worried about the wood one. I have actually broken optics in the past. Uh, long time subscribers here do know that on that very test. So it's not like it's so flimsy that it's just gonna break no matter what. I've done a number of one-handed manipulations uh, with this setup here. It's fine, there's no issues. Um, that said, it's just not gonna get to the durability level that you're gonna see with an RMR or like a, uh, an Aimpoint Acro, for example. Those are very durable sites. It just is what it is. There's pros and cons to each of those. I have reviews on the other two, and now we have a review on this one. So there is that. Would I recommend it for like a law enforcement officer or a military member for duty use? I wouldn't. I absolutely wouldn't. Would I recommend it for somebody uh, concealed carrying, home defense, those sorts of things? Yeah, I would. I, I would just say that you need to take it into um, account that it just isn't quite as durable. However, the advantages of it are nice. Again, being able to change that battery without having to re-zero it, the larger window, the less uh, angled shape of it for snags. Um, I should mention too, also that it does have one MOA click adjustments and they are positive and tactile. You can adjust it with the rim of a case. So that is good. It has 150 MOA of adjustments. So, I mean, really wide amount of adjustment, particularly for something that is this small. Um, it's gonna be compatible with any of your suppressor height sights out there which is good as well. One sort of con to it is that since it sits forward uh, versus an RMR, uh, you guys see here, I, you do get 100%, you get more carbon and oil and that sort of stuff build up on it from the rounds ejecting and the rounds ejecting are more likely to hit it. That said, I don't think that's an issue at all in terms of where these things are plenty strong, plenty durable for brass, that's not an issue, but you will develop gunk on there a little bit more quickly than you would with the RMR. So keep that in mind if you're a high round count shooter, that's that you can just wipe it off and keep on going. So I think we discussed basically everything that's pretty important with the exception of price point. MSRP on it is $749. Uh, it's definitely cheaper than that on the street. However, right now when I'm filming this in September of 2020, it's hard to find really anything, particularly anything of quality, and I would put the SRO in that category. Um, you're gonna find them roughly 525 to 550-ish on the street, um, if you can find them at all. So it's not inexpensive. There definitely are less expensive options out there. However, Georgicon is made in America. They have a great warranty. They have great customer service. If I drop this on concrete and broke it, it may not be usable at the time, but they would replace it. So that certainly is good. Um, but yeah, I think we covered pretty much everything I need to on the optic. If you guys have any questions that we didn't cover, by all means, you can post them down below in the comments section. However, the best place to reach me is over at my Facebook page because I do get back to everybody over there. Again, we're in the middle of the pandemic, so I got a lot of messages over there, thousands a day. I do get back to everybody. It just takes me a little bit, but that's the best place because I actually see them. Whereas on YouTube or uh, Instagram or wherever else I post content parlor, um, I don't always see all the messages or questions. So that's it guys, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Additionally, make sure you hit that notification bell because according to YouTube's analytics, only about 11% of you subscribers have done that. It gives you a better shot at being notified when I put content up. That said, if you want all the videos straight to you without a gigantic social media giant uh, in between you and me filtering the content. You can sign up for my email list. I send at most one email a week and really not even that um, with all the videos since the last email that went out. So that way there's no chance of you missing it if you're signed up. So there is that. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. Look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.